All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over a way that you can create a cool retro repeating text effect within Adobe Illustrator that you can take to your packaging designs, your poster designs, uh, whatever you may be creating within Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump into it. The first thing that we're going to do is come over here to new file. Uh, for this one, let's do 1000 by 2000 pixels which will give us a vertical document. Uh, first step here is let's just create a nice background. So we'll hit the M key to select the rectangle tool or else you can come back up over here and select the rectangle tool that way. Uh, we're gonna delete our stroke on this and change our fill to a nice yellow. Why don't we try something around. Mm, let's try that for now. Uh, we can always change that later if we'd like. Hit the V key to get our selection tool back and then hit command two, which will lock that background layer. Uh, you can now see that you, you can't bump it. Uh, alternatively, you could create a new layer for this and hit the lock button over here. But um, I think command two sometimes is just a little bit easier if it's just one layer that you're creating. So then let's type our word. I find that this works best with uh, all caps. And you'll see why here in a minute, but um, always possible to play with other options. Uh, we're gonna wanna switch our font here to something nice and bold. So why don't we try a Haas Grotesque Black. Okay, that looks pretty good there. Let's change this color just to a slight off black. Maybe something around there. Okay. So now that we have our word created and we have our background, we are going to draw a rectangle again using the M tool, over top of our word design. Then what we'll do is make sure this is the same color as the background and we will hit command left bracket which will send it one layer back, meaning it'll go just behind the, the word design and right in front of our background layer. So what we'll do here is make sure that the spacing is pretty even above and below the word. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay, now that we have those two drawn, what we'll do is group them together with Command G, or you can always right click and go to group up here. Um, so now that we have those two grouped, let's zoom out of it. We'll come uh, bring this up in the document, make sure it's centered over in our line panel. Then we'll click our group and then Alt click and Shift drag down. Um, so basically that'll duplicate our text and uh, make sure it's in the same vertical position as uh, its original layer. So now that we have our two layers of text, we are going to select both of them and go up here to Object Blend Make. So this will give us a number of copies between the two, but we're gonna wanna play with that a little bit more. So we'll go back to our Object tab, back to Blend, and then Blend Options. So you'll see that the default is Smooth Color but we're gonna wanna click Specified Steps and we'll do something like, why don't we try 16. Click OK. So now that we have our blend options created, we're gonna come over here to our pen tool. I would normally be the pen tool, but I recently used the anchor point tool, so that's what's showing up. Um, we're gonna click on our anchor point tool. Uh, if we wanna use the hotkey for that, it's Shift C, but we'll select that. Then we'll click on this bottom point here and drag out, and we will drag out our anchor point there, or our Bezier handle there, until we get a look that we like. So maybe something like that. If we wanna come back and edit that, all we have to do is click our anchor point tool, or our direct select tool, click on this, we'll see our anchor points pulled up, and then we can adjust them from there if we'd like. So yeah, that's more or less the effect that we're gonna go for. Why don't we do a quick addition to this to make sure that um, it's as good as it can be or as interesting as this can be. We'll blow it up to the size that we want. We'll make sure in our line panel over here that it is centered. Then what we can do is draw another rectangle right over the top of this. We will go to our color settings and change the hex code to 80, 80, 80, which will give us a mid-tone gray. From there, we will click on this rectangle and go up here to effect, artistic, and then down here to film grain. You're welcome to play with any other effects if you'd like. 
Um, but for today, let's just do film grain, which will pull up this panel and give us some options for playing with the grain. So maybe we want a larger grain a bit. Maybe something like that. Maybe we don't like the intensity so high, so we can pull that down or up. Um, this is gonna definitely take some processing power for your computer. So definitely save this step for last. But once we're happy, maybe something around there, uh, we'll hit OK, which will take a second and start loading into our Illustrator file. Uh, what we'll do from there is come over to our blend modes by clicking on opacity over in the right panel and then switching from normal to overlay, which is again going to take a second to, to render out. But we can see now that if we zoom in, you get a nice little film grain texture on all of your, uh, your whole design without really changing the color of anything too much. So just another extra layer to kind of give some character to your design. So yeah, that's pretty much it for today's tutorial, guys. If you enjoyed it or if you found it helpful, it would be awesome if you'd leave a like on this video. And if you're interested in more content like this, it'd be awesome if you'd stick around and subscribe. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Later.